Welcome back. 66 hung councils mean coalitions are the order of the day and days to come. Political players will have to put their differences aside to govern. In the spotlight now are the so-called kingmakers. Smaller parties and independent candidates hold all the right cards, it seems. Let's hear from some of them. I'm joined in studio by Gaten McKenzie from the Patriotic Alliance, Michael Beaumont from Action SA, and via Zoom, we have Corne Mulder from the Freedom From Plus. Gentlemen, thank you all so much for making time. I know it's been a tough week, right, for everybody, but uh, the three of you, I can say, are definitely celebrating. First off, uh, Michael Gaten, since you're in studio with us, do you guys actually like each other? I think he's a, he's a really cool guy. I mean, like, I've met him a few days actually ago, uh, where we formally met, and we've always been civil, and I think he's a really, really cool guy compared to other politicians. Yeah. Do you share that sentiment, Michael? <laughs> oh, absolutely, especially now that the campaign's over and you've got to talk about coalitions, now's the time where those relationships are going to matter. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Mulder, have you been engaging with anyone as yet about possible coalitions, or are you still working on that? Yes, we've had discussions, but uh, on a formal level, it's been on the leadership level, but it's almost talks about talks. The actual processes will get along early next week when negotiating teams of different parties will get together and start to see if they can fresh out agreements that can take us forward in terms of coalition uh, arrangements to govern on local level. Yeah. OK, let's start with the easy questions, because we heard in the run up to this election that you have to share the same values, core values, etc., to actually work together in these coalition governments. Does that still stand? Because we know sometimes after election, everything that's said goes out the window and the new rules are made. Michael, how are you approaching coalition governments as Action SA? From our side, it's got to actually start with a conversation around a ser uh, common service delivery agenda. You know, I think the one message that's come out of this election is that people are tired of politics, they want services, and they're looking for political parties who can focus on a common service delivery agenda that they can deliver to their benefit. I think from Action SA's side, we are trying to make this more about that agenda and making it transparent in terms of how we construct that agenda than making it about horse trading for political positions, because I think that has been part of the fault of coalitions in the past. Yeah. Uh, uh Gation, does that apply to you as well? Because I see lots of smaller parties already saying they're not going to work with the ANC. And it seems like everybody's ganging up on the ANC when it comes to a coalition governments. What's your stance on that? Well, I wouldn't know about small parties. Uh, you can ask the small parties there because we are no longer a small party. <laughs> okay, okay, uh, so yeah, I'll, so you, you get that. <laughs> I think i got a different, in the PA, we've got a different view. Because you see... We must be totally honest and transparent with the, with the, with the voters. Coalitions, how we approach it, we'll work with anybody. Because we don't take a big brother approach to it. We take an approach that this is what we want for our people and this is what we've promised. If we agree that you will allow us to do what we've promised and we've, we will allow you to do what you've promised, and I think then we ain't okay. But what politicians do is they say they will not work with this person and then they're in a corner. And they got to work because then power is slipping away. Then they make all these funny deals like, you vote for me, I vote for me. All these parties here talk to each other behind the scenes and say, you will vote for me, I will vote for you. So we don't have that. I do business with racists. I do, I'm a God-fearing man. I do business with people who don't believe in God. Because it's not about them. We will never be swallowed up by these parties. So I just want to say we've got a different way of looking at it. We know what we want. And any party that agrees with what we want because we're also not desperate to go into coalitions. Mm. I need to add that. We are very calm about it. We know if we stand back now, in, in, in three months they're going to fight. Yeah. And when they fight, they're both running to us, and then we're just much more expensive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mr. Mulder, what's your approach to coalition governments, especially when it comes to parties you will not work with? Because we've heard uh, Action SA say it won't work with the ANC, but you're now running a poll, which I'll ask you about in a moment. Uh, what do you have to say, Mr. Mulder, about your approach to this? I think it's very important that we understand the whole uh, theory behind coalitions if you want to be successful. Um, what we've had up till the, the election just now was not normal coalition governments. Those, most of them were minority governments. So at least I think this election, we really turned the corner in South Africa in terms of doing justice to our electoral system. Our electoral system asks for coalitions, and we are now there. The final figure would be about approximately 70 hung councils where we will have coalition governments. Now, the problem is this. 
coalition governments can never be about a tra horse trading and agreements about positions. It's not about positions. What we need is we need political parties that want to cooperate to come together and to say, okay, fine, I couldn't get the majority on my manifesto and you couldn't get the majority on your manifesto. So now we negotiate and see if we can compromise. And during that process, hopefully we can find a new agreed upon negotiated manifesto as a policy uh, position for that coalition to, to support that coalition agreement and then govern in terms of that new agreed upon compromised manifesto for the next five years. So what we need is we need majority coalitions where you can find parties that come to an agreement, they sign that agreement, they form a clear majority and then they govern for the next five years and they implement the agreed upon compromised manifesto. If you don't do that, and if it's only a question of horse trading about positions, we've got a problem and we already have a problem. I think earlier you mentioned that in terms of the uh, Municipal Structures Act, only gives 14 days after the proclamation for uh, new councils to be put in place. That is completely inadequate. If you want to really negotiate these 70 agreements, you can't really do that effectively in 14 days because you must understand this as well. These things are combined. It's almost like a spider's web. You can't just look at them individually, this council and that council, because there will be some trading. I can assist you here, but what about this metro, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. So it's a rather complicated process, but I think the people that will benefit in this process happily will be the electorate because at last... Our electoral system now will make provision for true multi-party democracy, and that's what we need. Yeah, but who have you ruled out? Because will you work with the EFF? I mean, you know, no, no, you no, guys no. have we, been very hardcore no, no, about each other. No, we said right from the beginning, even before the, during the election campaign, we made it quite clear. We believe that South Africa needs less ANC or EFF government, not more. And we are not going to assist to sustain an ANC government or an EFF government in any town because the reality is we are where we are because we've had ANC government for 27 years. We don't want that. We don't think we should sustain that. And we are not prepared. We're not going to do that. No. You don't agree with that approach, do you? No, I definitely not agree with it because you know, there's also some sort of elitism about this statement. What Mr. Malema said yesterday is that he's mentioning the two parties that are black, that you will not work with them. What the ANC has done wrong, the DA has also done wrong in the Western Cape. Our people are living amongst rats in the Western Cape. Our children are being killed. So for me, there's just a difference between the leopard and the lion. So what I'm saying to you is that anybody that tells you they will not go into a coalition with this one or with that one, on day 13, call us all back here. There's going to be lots of deals done. What we are saying as the PA, we say up front, these are our three things. Number one, we want... Uh, uh, our government to, 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 to move closer to God. We should, if you, if you, when you watch uh, Joe Biden... You want God, your government to move closer to God? Yes, you, you watch Joe Biden when he was inaugurated. God was everywhere there. You go to Qatar, I was on holiday, my last holiday was in Qatar. There was a godly government. Here we are being told we got the best constitution. This thing is not the best constitution that does not include our God. So we are unapologetic about that. Unapologetic about the word of God must come back in our country like the Americans, like you can go to Argentina. All those governments got God in the, at the center of it. Secondly, all, we want all illegal foreigners gone, all of them. The third thing, what we want, we want uh, every resident to get a bailout and a bailout to say, listen, we, let's give the people a break. COVID Where is people, that money going to come from? The, the money is not even coming in at the moment. And if you understand, that's what I'm trying to explain to people. The Cape Town is sitting with 18 billion rents at the moment. 18 billion. Do you know how much can 18 billion relieve the people of Mitchell's Plain, the people of Cryfontein, the people of Kalitsa? That's what I'm talking about. Uh, rates and taxes are not the only income of a municipality. Mm. You have treasury coming in, and you know what? As a businessman and as a astute businessman, you can't chase 9 million debt and use 11 million chasing the debt. It is an accepted norm in business to write off debt. I am saying let's do, there's a clause in the municipality making provision for that. Why can we not do it for the ordinary men on the street and women, but we do it for big business? Yeah. So will you agree to the three terms that they have as the Patriotic Alliance though? You know, I think we really want to bring it back to local government issues. And I mean, it's not that I'm particularly taking issue with what's being said, but I think for us it's got to be about a service delivery agenda. We're in a local but government space. Is God space. in that service delivery agenda? Because that's what the PA has as a term. No, personally, I think Action SA stands for the fact that our constitution supports a, 
a secular society, but we obviously want to protect every individual's right to make that choice. I personally am religious, and many of our leaders are, but it's a constitutional matter, and I think we've got to bring this back to service delivery. Because local government that we're approaching now is about electricity, it's about water, it's about roads, it's about housing. And I think there's so much space to work together in those issues because the big issues that divide us nationally as a country, and there are many, our country is very polarized on some of those national issues. At local government, there is the scope to actually see that you can carve out that common service delivery agenda and work with people locally that you might not be able to work with provincially or nationally. But you have already ruled out the ANC. You're not yes. running a poll asking your supporters, you know, who you would want to go into coalition with. How is that looking? And how do you outright rule a party? Because as Cornelius and the FF Plus, it's, you know, because they were the architects of corruption. That's the line both of you are using. I heard uh, Herman Mashaba say that at The Rock the other night. So in the interest of society, if you need to work with the ANC to maybe even try to push them in the right direction, why won't you consider that? Well, I mean, Shahan, let, let's talk practically, because local government is a very practical space. I've worked in the city of Johannesburg, where 35 billion rands worth of fraud and corruption was investigated, and the most horrific things were discovered when those matters were being investigated under Herman Mashaba's leadership. Many and most of those acts were being committed under the name of the ANC or by individuals representing the ANC at the time. And the reality is you can't work with a political party to, ad to adhere to the mandate that voters have given you to fight corruption if you're partnering with an organization that's been involved in it. Because eventually you're going to face that decision, do I do what I'm supposed to do and act and potentially destabilize a coalition government? Or, you know, do I just let it go because this is a coalition partner? And we can never have that kind of principle being compromised at a local government level. And that's a very practical example. But, but for what it's worth, the stuff that's emerging from this poll is that people are saying there's a lot of political parties you can work with and find that common service delivery agenda yeah. because people want less politics and, and more services. But, Michael, you can't hold a party accountable on the opposition benches inside, right? If they take over, if the ANC and the EFF join forces and they take over the city of Joburg, Otswane, and you're in the opposition benches because you're not desperate to be in a government, which is what all of you are saying, how do you assist them to move in the right direction? Because you've basically lost again. You're sitting there as opposition. You're shouting and screaming, but you don't know what's happening internally. So how is that going to help South Africans? Because it's not going to do that. You're ending up, you're ending up in the same position you were previously. I know you're still new in terms of the party being in this first election, yes. but that's where you're going to be, an opposition party that's screaming and shouting with no inside info about how things are being run. Sure. I mean, let's just be clear, because Action to Say was set up deliberately to say we're not an opposition party. That's why we hand-selected... But in, in council, you will be an opposition party, regardless of how you brand yourself, because you, you're, you're in council as an opposition who's now going to decide on things that happen in the metro or municipality. Well, we see ourselves as going to be part of coalitions, and if you look at the seats that we've gotten in a place like the city of Johannesburg, it's a very considerable number of seats that we come in with. It's not a, a party that's going to top up somebody else. It's a party that forms a very large part of a potential government in the city of Johannesburg. Because yeah. we were set up as an organization not to be in opposition. There are too many political parties in opposition, and that's why we're going to be working day and night to ensure that an arrangement can be put together, yeah. which we can be a part of, that will serve the residents of the municipalities I mean, involved. The, the fact that you participate in the election as a political party and you had to register as a political party to take part in the election says it all. Gayton, I have to go to Corne. I know you want to say something. But, uh, Corne, just, just listening to the two gentlemen here, would you consider going into a coalition government with them? Because I know things happen behind the scenes, but I think South Africans have a right to know about who you're open to and where you stand with these things. Yeah, sure. No, absolutely. I think the first important point to take into consideration is that obviously these kind of agreements are not negotiated on television. They are happening behind closed doors. But in the end, the results will be public and will be there for the public to see. No, we said quite clearly, and I've, I've said that uh, we don't want to have more NCO or EFF government. But besides that, we are prepared to cooperate with all the other parties and to negotiate and to see if we can find common ground. And obviously, you will have different situations in different uh, councils. For in some councils, we will be able to form coalition governments and we will be part of those governments and we will be a majority with the other coalition partners and we will govern in the best interest of the community. And that's what the electorate expects. 
Yeah. But there are other instances where the ANC will be the clear governing party, and, and that will be so, but we can also be a very obje uh, uh, effective opposition party and we'll make it as difficult as possible for them, playing the role of opposition. We know how to do that as well. And slowly but surely, there will be another election in 2024. And from our perspective, it's only a question of time before we replace the ANC in South Africa, and that's what we're striving for. So obviously we will cooperate and, and negotiate with other parties to, to the best interest of the electorate. Right. I think, I think, you know what, uh, if we, I'm just a very pragmatic person. If you go in a plane and you want to tell the air hostess, I can't sit next to that person, mm. then you better get your private plane. Because this is the same thing. This government does not belong to any one of us. So for them to not be in the plane and say, when I jump in this plane, I don't want to sit to next, to next to this person. So here's the truth of the matter is that, like for instance with me, Nobody can say they want to work with the Patriotic Alliance because yeah. we hold serious cards in the Western Cape particularly. So I am saying that what we need to do, we worked with the ANC in Johannesburg. We found corruption. We found absolute corruption. And you're going to change your stance now? What we, no, what we did is we exposed the corruption. We are the only people, the people were charged, they're about to be charged, and the SIU agreed with us. We're the only party that, ex that got people during COVID to be arrested for theft of that five, of part of the 500 billion. Yeah. So what I'm saying is... What no, but now I'm asking you, would you still go into an alliance with the ANC knowing I what you know? I will go into an alliance with the AWB if they still existed, because I understand power. But why would you empower a party which you have found and exposed corruption? It doesn't make sense. I am not empowering a party. You I am are saying, by letting them be in charge of You know of how much metro. corruption is there in the DA? In fact, I, 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 I no, think no, the you Western use State. the ANC as an example. No, no, but I'm, I'm saying to you, question. all these parties, let me tell you, except uh, X and S because they've not been in government, and I've never heard about corruption or freedom from because they've never... But I can tell you, all the parties that are in government, there's so much corruption. Go and read the Auditor General's report. So what I'm saying is that, that I shouldn't be in politics if, I, if we are going into politics to fix stuff. Yeah. When, the, when we realize that we have no recourse, we left the coalition of the ANC. We had a fight, and they said go, we said go, and we, we kicked them out in Nelson Mandela Bay, and we put a deer in there. So yeah. we don't have favoritism, but we don't share the hatred that people like, if they don't like a person, they all don't want you to like a person. We are here for power, I'm here for our people, and our people need houses, need jobs, and I'm not going to get jobs in opposition benches for them. Okay. That's a fact. Okay, thank you all so much for your time, appreciate it. I wish we had more time. But I'm hoping that people actually got something from this interview. That was Gator McKenzie from the Patriotic Alliance, Michael Beaumont from Action SA, and Corne Mulder from Freedom Front Plus.